The two-dimensional discrete cosine transform is a commonly used tool for compressing images. Our objectives in this video are to interpret the 2D discrete cosine transform as a representation for an image in terms of a weighted sum of basis images. We can achieve compression by setting some of the discrete cosine transform coefficients to zero, and JPEG uses a variation on this idea. So the two-dimensional discrete cosine transform expresses an image x of m comma n in what looks like a very complicated formula. We're going to group the coefficients together, and we can also group the product of the two cosines into a basis image c sub k comma l of m comma n. So m and n are the indices of the image, and k and l are the frequency indices of the cosines. With this grouping, we can see that the discrete cosine transform is representing the image as this weighted sum of basis images, where the weights are the discrete cosine coefficients, the x superscript c, as well as these other factors, the a's and the n in the denominator. And these basis images, the c sub k comma l of m comma n, are the product of a vertical cosine with frequency k over 2n, and a horizontal cosine with frequency l over 2n. In this slide, we're showing those basis signals for the indices k and l, so k 0, k equals 1, k equals 2, and so on. And then this represents l equals 0, l equals 1, l equals 2. And each of these images is an 8 by 8 image representing c of k comma l of m comma n. Since each image is 8 by 8, we have a total of 64 possible images that represent the 64 pixels in an 8 by 8 image. So in this first column, we're seeing the vertical cosines, and in the first row, we're seeing the horizontal frequency cosines, and then in the other entries, we're seeing products of these different horizontal and vertical frequency cosines, with the lower right corner being the product of the highest frequency horizontal and vertical cosine. So for example, the basis image associated with k equals 5 and l equals 2 is circled in green. In this example, we're showing an 8 by 8 image, which consists of a horizontal edge. So we're going from light gray to nearly black, and if we take the DCT coefficients of this image, we find that they're all concentrated in the L equals zero, or along the vertical frequency direction. So they have zero horizontal frequency, which is consistent with the fact that there's no variation in this image in the horizontal direction. Now the idea of image compression is to use only a portion of the coefficients. So for example, all of these coefficients on the right-hand side, they're all zero. And in the example I'm showing below, we used only four of the DCT coefficients, this one and these three, which were the four largest. And if we approximate the image using only four DCT coefficients, we see that we do a pretty good job of reconstructing the edge. And since we're using four DCT coefficients as opposed to the 64 that were originally present, we've achieved compression by a factor of 16, or 64 over 4. In this particular image, since it has this horizontal edge, and therefore all of the horizontal DCT coefficients with L equal 1 through 7 are 0, it's only the L equals 0 terms, we could have perfectly reconstructed the original image using only 8 DCT coefficients. So we could have got a compression by a factor of 8, with no loss or no approximation error by using all of these eight coefficients. And this is the basis behind JPEG. In JPEG, when we compress an image, we're going to break up some arbitrary large m by n image into eight by eight blocks, as I've illustrated in this graphic. Then for each block, 
we take the two-dimensional discrete cosine transform to find the DCT coefficients corresponding to that block. And we save the important and significant DCT coefficients. That's based on the size of the coefficients as well as the importance of them to a human viewer because the human eye, it turns out, is less sensitive in general to high spatial frequencies. So a DCT coefficient associated with very high spatial frequencies would need to have a larger amplitude to be as important as one associated with the lower spatial frequencies. Now in practice, rather than just thinking about saving or discarding DCT coefficients, what happens is that bits are allocated to each DCT coefficient based on its significance or importance. If a particular coefficient is deemed more significant and important, we would allocate more bits to that coefficient. This again is based on the size or amplitude of the coefficient as well as the corresponding spatial frequencies and how humans perceive those frequencies. So if we've stored our image in the JPEG format, we can decode it for display by reversing the process. So we're going to have the file, there are bits in it, for each of the 8x8 eight eight blocks. So we're going to read the bits for that block and then convert those bits to the DCT coefficients for that block. We'll take the inverse discrete cosine transform to find the 8x8 eight eight image associated with that block. And then having done that for all the blocks in the image, we simply stitch the individual 8x8 eight eight blocks back together to form the complete image. This approach, JPEG, achieves very significant reductions in the size of the files required to save an image. For example, a 20 megapixel digital camera file may require 20 megabytes to save in its uncompressed format, but if we convert it to JPEG, we may be able to save that same image with negligible loss of quality using 4 or 5 megabytes. And if we're willing to tolerate some loss of quality, we may even be able to save it using 1 megabyte. So pretty substantial reductions can be obtained by exploiting the discrete cosine transform and the perceptual characteristics of the human eye.